welcome to the 2021 Baccalaureate Commencement at Buffalo State College. For the School of Education, as well as those receiving a Bachelor of Science in Individualized Studies. Because of the large number of undergraduate students receiving degrees, this is one of four undergraduate ceremonies being held today. Students graduating from the School of Education, as well as those receiving Bachelor of Science in Individualized Studies, will be recognized at this ceremony. The ceremonies for the graduate of the School of Arts and Humanities, School of Natural and Social Sciences, and School of the Professions are being held in separate, concurrent ceremonies. There will be a separate ceremony for those completing graduate degrees. Our ceremony, our ceremony will begin with the singing of the national anthem by members of the Buffalo State Chamber Choir, directed by Chair and Associate Professor of Music Victoria J. Furby. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars Welcome each of you to the 2021 commencement ceremony, and I extend congratulations to the graduates. I now have the privilege of introducing SUNY Chancellor Jim Malatros to offer his opening remarks. To the graduating class of 2021, today we celebrate over 90,000 graduating SUNY students. I know this is not how you expected your final semester to have gone. Since March of last year, as the world went into quarantine and we began a new normal of social distancing and masking up, you had to adapt to the uncertainties of what was to come to juggle new responsibilities, all while continuing on the path of completing your education. In the face of a global health crisis, you persevered. Whether it was making the transition to online learning, having to move back home to continue your studies, or not being able to be with your friends, teammates, and a favorite faculty and staff member. And despite it all, many of you stepped up to help out your campuses on the front lines with their COVID-19 efforts, from volunteering with testing, to administering vaccines, to providing academic support to those struggling with remote learning. You made sure that your communities were being taken care of. That is who SUNY is. That's who you are. You also created art, conducted research, and found your passions. You did it all, and I know it hasn't been easy. But today we celebrate your hard-earned and well-deserved degree. Although many of our campuses are unable to celebrate this important milestone with you, with all the pop and circumstance that you deserve, let it be known that we are all so proud of the class of 2021, the grit and determination you have shown to complete your studies, no matter the obstacles thrown in your way. You are to be admired, lauded, and always remembered. I'll cherish the opportunities I've had this year to meet so many of you, both in person and virtually, and to hear your inspiring stories. Like Madison Cunningham, who I met at my visit to Corning Community College, who is creating a toy for children with sensory processing disorders using 3D printing, and volunteers her time at the local hospital. Or Ilion Alexandre, a first-generation U Albany student and a recipient of the Norman R. McConney Jr. Award for Student Excellence, who hopes to continue on to medical school and work in emergency medicine. And Ramatu Muhammad, 
a SUNY Potsdam International Studies major and diversity ambassador who will be continuing her studies at the Johns Hopkins School of Advanced International Studies, or Jacob Eckhaus from Binghamton University, who through the Student Voices Action Committee helped create the Food Pantry Refrigeration Grant Program for all SUNY campuses, or Kaylee Hosrath of SUNY Geneseo, who stepped up as a student volunteer using her training as an operations chief for Geneseo First Response EMT service when all students had to be tested before leaving for Thanksgiving break. And Darian Hunt from Farmingdale State College, who recently received the inaugural Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Chancellor's Award for Student Excellence for being a champion of racial justice and equity on his campus. And Omar Guy, who grew up in Gambia and who is now completing his studies at Sullivan. As you all look toward the future, know that your SUNY education has prepared you to succeed in whatever you put your mind to, whether it be furthering your education or joining the workforce. You and your fellow graduates will continue the SUNY legacy of leaving a positive impact on your communities, always striving to solve for our world's most pressing problems and being stewards of excellence and innovation. As the newest members of the three million strong SUNY alumni family, I wish you luck as you start this exciting next chapter in your life and I look forward to seeing all that you accomplish. I know you will do great things. Congratulations. I now have the privilege of introducing President Catherine Conway Turner to offer her commencement address. Greetings to family members, friends, alumni, and especially to the class of 2021. On behalf of the faculty and staff at Buffalo State College, I welcome you to our 2021 virtual commencement ceremony. Although health precautions due to the pandemic have prevented us from convening in person, your campus has employed creativity to develop our 2021 commencement ceremony in such a way that we can celebrate this significant milestone together. I enjoyed meeting many graduates during our pre-commencement events on the quad, and I look forward to future opportunities to learn of where your adventures and travels will take you. This ceremony will also allow me to officially confer you with your well-deserved academic degrees and honors. We will share many expressions of congratulations, noteworthy presentations, and special remarks. We are proud of our 2021 graduates. The completion of your degree marks a significant and important achievement in your academic career. Each of you are now prepared to move forward and lead within your chosen area of study and interests. For some of you, the next step will be that much anticipated job or adventure with your degree in hand. And for others, you're off to advanced study for a professional certification. And for some, your degree allows further advancement within your current career path. Today's academic achievement offers all graduates an advancement and a new opportunity to move forward. You are ready to roar, graduates. This last few semesters here were a test of your motivation, your fortitude, and your persistence. You passed the test. You learned what it takes to pivot and still be successful, and you've often heard your campus community members express the importance of these three words believe, inspire, and achieve. Today, for one final time, I share how important it is for you to embrace the meaning of these three words as you move forward. It is important for you to believe in yourself and know that you can make a difference in your community and in your world in ways that are meaningful to you. You must know and remind yourself of the importance of self-belief and confidence in your talents and in your abilities. If you don't believe you can accomplish something, you can easily convince yourself not to even try. I remember a story my husband has recounted on several occasions. He was once a young man who was a college track team participant, where he was a sprinter. However, he didn't believe he could outpace another young man who was known to be very fast. Time and time again, when he was pitted against his peer, he lost. His coach approached him one day and asked if he knew why he couldn't surpass his teammate. Of course, he said. He said, it's because my teammate was faster. 
His coach said, no, you are actually faster. It is because you don't believe you can beat him. With that knowledge, he was able to recognize that he was stopping himself from winning. And in a very short time, he went on to eclipse the time of his teammate. You have to believe in yourself and your ability to succeed in ways that are important to you. That coach also served as a source of inspiration. You must allow yourself to be inspired just as you inspire others. Who and what inspires you is important to know. As a member of the Buffalo State community, you have faculty, staff, coaches, counselors, peers, family members, and others who've inspired you. The question is, how will you keep inspirational spirits around you? Perhaps you are inspired by a beautiful poem, a sunset, or a speech that touches you in some important way. I urge you to find inspiration within your world. I advise you to gather people and communities around you who inspire you to greatness. As a young girl, I was often inspired by the poets and the novelists and storytellers who I found were documented in the pages of books. I was inspired by the beauty of nature and the compassion of those who sought to help people in need and who fought for Jeff's world. What inspired you is really unique but it is necessary to cultivate the sources of inspiration as you continue to grow and move forward. Many of you know that I have frequently visited Haiti, partnering with an organization that elevates the health, education, and economic development of a rural community in northeast portion of that country. My commitment to Haiti has now reached 15 years, how the time has flown. Each conversation I've had with members of the born community and each visit inspires me. There I have found yet another community of people who work together, struggle together, and support each other. I find that inspirational. They may not have a lot of material wealth, but they are rich in spirit, in community connection, in kindness, and in resilience. I recommend that you seek out encouragements of inspiration in your life. Do not seek or foster discouragement and hopelessness, but instead, turn your eyes toward promise and a better future. I ask you to grasp hope and hopeful ways to nourish forgiveness and future happiness, and to strive to be the grace in the room and not the gloom. During your years at Buffalo State, you have also been focused on your personal and academic achievement. You've achieved great things within your chosen field and within your community. I counsel you to continue to set goals and move toward true and authentic achievement. I know that it is not always easy to meet or exceed your goals. This past year and a half have given us unimaginable difficulties. Things to really maneuver one thing after the other as a country, as a state, and as a world community. We've faced staggering levels of death and illness, and we've witnessed acts of racism and discrimination and assaults on values and principles many of us hold sacred. We have felt pain and traumas as acts of injustice have flowed at an alarming rate. We have felt times of loss and anger and sadness right here on our campus. Although we face many challenges, do not let it diminish the joy of today's achievement. Your belief in yourself and tapping into your inspiration have led you to meet and exceed your goals. The difficult times you have faced in the past will not be the only ones. People before you, you and those after you have overcome obstacles as they've moved ahead to achieve. As Langston Hughes penned in a poem entitled Mother to Son in 1922. Well, son, I'll tell you, Life for me ain't been no crystal stair. It's had tacks in it, and splinters, and boards torn up, and places with no carpet on the floor, bare. But all the time, I've been a climbing on, and reaching landings, and turning corners, and sometimes going in the dark, where there ain't been no light. So boy, don't you turn back. Don't you set down on those steps. 
because you find it's kind of hard. Don't you fall now, for I am still going, honey. I still climbing, and life for me ain't been no crystal stair. Buffalo State graduates, no matter where your journey started, and no matter how difficult your journey has been, today you complete an important academic goal. Today be known to all that you have crossed the finish line and completed a significant and important milestone. And if you continue to chant the important words of believe, inspire, and achieve, you'll be able to handle whatever crosses your path whether it's a pebble, a boulder, or an earthquake. Each member of 2021 undergraduate and graduate class has experienced twists and turns as they completed their academic and educational goals. You each have an individual story. And here I'll share just a few lines from the storybooks of some of our students. Among our graduates today, you'll find Damian Boyd, who is completing his undergraduate degree in education. He rode his bike to and from his student teaching placement in the city, rain or shine, and is graduating with a 4.0 GPA. During his placement, his mentor recounted that Damien nurtured each child academically by setting a high bar, and he was an invaluable member of the teaching team. And Erica Green is graduating today as our first bachelor's degree recipient in Africana Studies major. It took her three attempts at college before completing her degree. And today she stands for someone who did not give up her dream. And she graduates proudly and wishes to inspire others to never give up on their dream. And Mamuda Ramlin is graduating with a bachelor's degree in chemistry and a minor in mathematics with an overall GPA of 3.92. She arrived in the US from Bangladesh when she was 16. Learning the English language and the US culture was necessary for the success that she has found. She has completed significant research projects and has been awarded the Edmund Schulman Award for undergraduate research in both 2020 and 2021 and the American Chemical Society's Award in Organic Chemistry as well. Comey graduates today with a degree in social work with a 3.64 GPA. She grew up in a refugee camp in the border of Burma and Thailand after fleeing the horrors of, of war. Her resilience and spirit have helped her successfully manage her difficult personal journey and the obstacles she has faced as she moved to success. Among our many master's degree recipients are problem solvers, community leaders, and passionate advocates for our community. Erica Luz Cabrera Rivera was raised by a single father with the help of her grandparents. In 2001, as a young mother, she moved to Buffalo and began her climb to complete her master's degree and teach in a bilingual exceptional education class. From GED to associate degree to bachelor's degree and now a master's, Erica has not wavered from her dream to make a difference for students for whom English is not their first language and for whom education attainment is a challenge. And Dr. Noor Bag is completing his Master of Science degree in Creative Studies. As a physician in Pakistan, he had a dream of developing a framework to train communities to help when they are facing life-threatening emergencies. He was inspired by his mother's death from sudden cardiac arrest and decided he wanted to train community members life-saving skills like CPR and hemorrhage control. His master's project, when implemented, will indeed save lives. These are just a few of the nearly 2,000 stories of the class of 2021. These are Buffalo State stories and they make up the fabric of our campus. They add the vibrancy and uplifting stories that typify our college. Students, wherever you go, you will take a part of this great campus with you. You will remember the faculty who taught you and especially those favorite faculty and staff members who helped you move along your path towards success. You will always be a part of the campus that believes not only 
and a high quality education, but in the connections to the broader community. Buffalo State stands for social justice, equity, and inclusion, and we are willing to lean into securing a just society for all. This is Buffalo State College, your campus, and we will always be a part of you. As you move throughout life, people will ask you where you went to college and what your campus was like. You will tell them your story, which is the Buffalo State story. You now have a wonderful foundation, but your future experiences will open you doors for you to travel, new mountains to climb, and new adventures to explore. Keep your spirit of growth, and you will find amazing avenues and opportunities open to you. You are the class of 2021. You are a force for good in the world, and I look forward to having you back on campus as members of the alumni community and to hear about the amazing things you do as you move forward. Congratulations again, class of 2021. This year, several of our graduates have been honored by the State University of New York with the Chancellor's Award for Student Excellence. The Chancellor's Award is the highest honor bestowed by the State University of New York upon a student. This award recognizes a model student who have integrated academic excellence with achievements in such areas as athletics, community service, creative and performing arts, entrepreneurship, leadership, and career achievement. These students were formally recognized by the SUNY Chancellor, Jim Malatris, earlier this year. At Buffalo State, it has been a long-standing tradition to present these fine students to the faculty, staff, and their fellow graduates at commencement. You will find a full description of each student's accomplishments in your program. These awards bring distinction to the recipients and honor to Buffalo State. Kelly E. Glowney. Bachelor's of Science in Childhood Education and Mathematics Education. Lila M. Rollo, Bachelor's of Science in Social Work. We are excited to recognize our student speaker for this commencement ceremony, Gabriella J. McKinley. With the highest undergraduate student award given at Buffalo State College, the President's Medal for Outstanding Undergraduate Student. Ms. McKinley has earned a Bachelor's of Arts in Theater, attaining a 3.95 GPA, while participating in the Dean's Honors Program and also minoring in Legal Studies. Eminently talented, she aspires to use theater and storytelling for justice and to lift up at-risk youth and the formerly incarcerated through the art of theater. Her leadership in and beyond the department is inspiring to her peers, the organization she is involved with, and the faculty and staff with whom she works. She has completed academic work in dramaturgy, company management, administration, and drama-based education. Her independent capstone project focused on designing four lesson plans based on her coursework, performances, internships, and leaderships. On stage, she has earned lead and supporting roles in productions at Buffalo State and professional theaters in the Buffalo area. 
She thrilled audiences on campus as Suge Avery in The Color Purple and Amelia and Othello, and earned praise for professional roles in the Kabanoki Theater and the Torn Space Theater. She was selected for the highly competitive Hamilton Company Management Internship at Shays Theater in Buffalo, performing alongside the company manager to conduct daily office activities, plan future trips, and organize documents. In her hometown community of Staten Island, New York, Ms. McKinley has volunteered her talents as a youth liaison and theatrical coordinator for the Institute for the Development of Adolescents and Teenagers, an organization she built with her mother to create programming and advocate for the needs of youth. Now I am extremely proud to introduce Gabriella McKinley, the 2021 President's Medal for Outstanding Undergraduate Student Recipient, and invite her to deliver her student address. Thank you, President Conway Turner, for providing me the opportunity to speak for the class of 2021. We are grateful to our loved ones, faculty, and staff that have supported us endlessly throughout our academic journeys here at Buffalo State. Lastly, thank you to the college for constantly challenging us to not only participate, but excel, not just to improve ourselves, but everyone around us. And that is the challenge that we accept. What are we commencing to? As graduates, we're all following many different paths. We're entering a world unlike anything our predecessors have experienced before us. We can be pioneers and revolutionaries. We are the ones unafraid to make our voices heard. We have as many viewpoints as we do graduates, but what we share is that we are unafraid to transform systems and make them work for everyone whether it's by forging a new path for scientific discovery, telling the ever-changing story of our generation on the stage, or inspiring future generations of students by creating an education system that works for all. It is now our duty to pioneer the changes we wish to see in the world. All the evidence points to the conclusion that we can. We are the first graduating class to complete an entire year of remote learning amidst a pandemic. We are the same students that led the reignition of the Black Lives Matter movement through our protests, voting, and social media, and the same students leading the call for a stop to Asian hate. Our class is one piece of a much bigger movement. Our degrees are ours. They are a reflection of the late study nights, tough rehearsals and practices, all the endless sacrifices we've all made to bring us to this moment. Reflect on what pushed us to keep going when things got tough. Our lowest moments when everything told us this was the furthest we could go. And then we found our spark. Let's challenge ourselves to do things that ignite our souls, only things that set us on fire. That is where we'll find some of our greatest successes. Buffalo State has given us the tools to fully explore our passions and discover new ones, realize what we loathe and what we couldn't live without. Whether it was through the Anne Frank Project Social Justice Festival or, or leading a USG organization, traveling abroad, playing on a sports team, being in a show, or stepping, strolling, and dancing on the pavement at Moore Block Party, whatever it was that made our college experiences something to be proud of, let the passion we found there be what guides us into the future. Let our passions be the deciding factor. And to those of us that haven't found that passion yet, keep exploring, discovering, trying, and asking questions until you do. Then pass it on and transform an industry, a system, a life with what moves you. And when we feel as though we've explored that passion to its furthest limits, remember what Tony Award-winning actor Andre De Shields said, the top of one mountain is the bottom of the next. Keep climbing. Thank you. Thank you, Gabriella, for those inspiring words. Congratulations to you again on your well-deserved recognition. The President's Distinguished Service Award recognizes individuals or groups who have made significant sustained contributions to Buffalo State College and are the larger community. 
Recipients are selected by the president upon recommendation of a committee of faculty and staff. The president considers the following criteria in making the award. Educating the individual, serving the public, and enriching the community. This year, I'm excited to present the President's Distinguished Service Award to Buffalo Mayor Byron W. Brown, Buffalo State Class of 1983. Mayor Brown has led the revitalization of Buffalo and has been an invaluable partner to Buffalo State and our students. We are proud to be able to recognize him for his significant public service and impact. Please refer to your program for more information on Mayor Brown and enjoy his remarks. It's an incredible honor for me to receive the Buffalo State College President's Distinguished Service Award. I gained a great foundation at Buffalo State College from my very first semester as a 17-year-old from New York City. I appreciated the interesting classes and warm environment that included interaction with so many talented students, committed professors, and dedicated college leadership. This is a special place that brought out the best in me both in the classroom and in college life. I pledged Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity, eventually becoming the chapter president, as well as being an officer of the campus's Afro-American Student Association and the Inter-Greek Association. I was also elected vice president of the United Students Government and played on the junior varsity basketball team. Those experiences, along with my classroom studies, put me on a lifelong path of community service. It was an honor to be a voice for my fraternity brothers and the student body and make lifelong friends in the process. I've been fortunate to build on those early leadership experiences to become a city council member, a New York State Senator, chairman of the New York State Democratic Party, and for the last 15 years, the mayor of my adopted hometown, the city of Buffalo, New York. I've also enjoyed returning to Buffalo State over the years and for the last three years serving as a professor of practice teaching in the college's Master of Public Administration program. All that started right here on this campus. Thank you, President Catherine Conway Turner, I am deeply honored to receive this award. I will always be a proud Bengal. Thank you, Mayor Brown, for your kind words and continued support for your alma mater. In addition, I'm thrilled to present the President's Distinguished Service Medal to Mr. Ross B. Kinsey, former chairman and CEO of Gold Dome Bank. A former chair of the Buffalo State College Council, Mr. Kinsey established the Ross B. Kinsey Family Presidential Scholarship at Buffalo State to provide opportunities to promising students. We are proud to be able to recognize him for his long-term impact on the college. Please refer to your program for more information on Mr. Kinsey. Although Mr. Kinsey was unable to join us today, he sends the following remarks. Madam President and the entire Buffalo State community, please accept my sincere appreciation for this exceptional honor. It carries great significance to me and my family. When I arrived in Buffalo in 1979 to join the executive team at Buffalo Savings Bank, which would later become Gold Dome, I knew that I wanted to be immersed in the revitalization of downtown Buffalo and Western New York. With the support of my late wife Langley, I was fortunate to be invited to serve on the boards of such noteworthy organizations as the Greater Buffalo Chamber of Commerce, now the Buffalo Partnership, the Greater Buffalo Development Foundation, the Business Council of the State of New York, Millard Fillmore Hospitals, Kaleida Health Education and Research Foundation, the Western New York Commission on Healthcare Reform, the Buffalo Philharmonic, the University at Buffalo, and several other prestigious organizations who have served residents of Western New York with dedication. I was proud of my association with each and every institution. One organization always stood out to me and my family, Buffalo State College. I've had the honor of serving on the College Council or the Foundation Board since 1980 and chaired the former for 18 years. 
From my seat on those august bodies, I observe the exemplary work being done by Buffalo State College faculty and staff on behalf of the student body. I gained a deep appreciation for the leadership at the college from Dr. Bruce Johnstone through Dr. Katherine Conway Turner, who I hold in the highest esteem. That perspective led my wife and me to establish the Ross B. Kenzie Family Presidential Scholarship, which is designed to enhance diversity by awarding scholarships to academically talented minority students. My family and I have proudly and fervently supported that scholarship every year since day one. And nothing gives us more pleasure than to interact with those students, to learn their stories, to hear their aspirations, and to know that we were able to contribute to their success. I humbly accept this award on behalf of my late wife Langley, my daughters Rachel and Mary, our grandchildren, and all of the remarkable students at Buffalo State College. Thank you, Mr. Kinsey, for your inspiring words and actions. The honorary doctorate degree is the highest form of recognition offered by the State University of New York to persons of exceptional distinction. Its purpose is to recognize those whose lives and significant achievements are widely known and highly regarded. It is my honor and with the greatest of pride that I now bestow upon Joy Harjo the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa, from the State University of New York. Joy Harjo, the 23rd Poet Laureate, consultant in poetry in the United States Library of Congress, is serving her third consecutive term as U.S. Poet Laureate. She is the first Native American to hold the position and only the second Poet Laureate ever to be appointed to an exceptional third term. Born in Tulsa, Oklahoma, Ms. Harjo is a member of the Muskegee Creek Nation and belongs to Hickory Ground. She left home to attend high school at the Innovative Institute of American Indian Arts, which was then a borough of Indian Affairs School. She began writing poetry as a member of the University of New Mexico's Native Student Organization, the SEVA Club, in response to Native empowerment movements. She went on to earn her MFA at the Iowa Writers' Workshop and to teach English Creative Writing and American Indian Studies at UCLA, the Universities of New Mexico, Arizona, Arizona State, Illinois, Colorado, Hawaii, and Tennessee, and her alma mater, the Institute of American Indian Arts, while performing music and poetry nationally and internationally. She is the author of nine books of poetry, including her most recent, the highly acclaimed An American Sunrise, which won the 2020 Oklahoma Book Award. Conflict Resolution for Holy Beings, which was shortlisted for the Griffin Poetry Prize and named a notable book of the year by the American Library Association. And In Mad Love and War, which received the American Book Award and the Delmore Swartz Memorial Award. Her first memoir, Crazy Brave, was awarded the Penn USA Literary Award in Creative Nonfiction and the American Book Award. And her second, Poet Warrior, A Call for Love and Justice, is forthcoming from W.W. Norton this fall. As a musician, she performs solo and with her band, the Aerodynamics Band. She has toured across the United States and in Europe and in South America and in India and in Africa and in Canada. In addition to serving as U.S. Poet Laureate, Ms. Harjo is a Chancellor of the Academy of American Poets. We are delighted to present Ms. Harjo's commencement address to the class of 2021. As I speak to you from the corner in my apartment in Tulsa, Oklahoma, I am imagining all of us gathered beneath towering trees dressed in opulent green with rows of students and dignitaries in ceremonial dress. In our imaginary graduation, we have no need for masks. We are gathered post pandemic and we jubilantly embrace this moment. We have found found a way to incorporate difference and there are no more killings of each other based on race, culture, sexual preference or status of any sort. Each of us is celebrated for our difference, for what our diversity brings to the collective story. The earth is flourishing. There is no caging of children at any border. There are no borders, no sex trafficking. 
Women occupy a place as valued as men in all of society and respected, and even paid the same. Poetry is as revered as football. Imagine. Isn't imagination what has brought us all to this moment of time, to this doorway of becoming? It's the imagination of the poets, artists, scientists, healers, teachers, warriors, mothers, fathers, all those within the, whose pathways we continue. We are in it, and it is always moving. Each thought, each dream, each gesture changes it, and it changes us. As you stand here together at this doorway of your becoming, realize that each of you has imagined each step, and it is imagination and fortitude that have enabled you to move through the many challenges that mark your journey to this graduation moment. At this moment, you hold the tools you need to help remake and inspire a universe that will be passed on to the next generations. Imagine that seated near are families, friends, staff, and professors who have accompanied you on this journey. Birds, the sky messengers, keep on with their stories above us. They are as important as ours. And this earth, this place, Original Haudenosaunee territory is still tended by the people and their ancestors in their songs, prayers, and stories of goodwill and connection with all that sustains our human bodies, minds, and hearts. We are essentially the earth, for without it, without the tremendous gifts and inspiration of the earth, we would not be here. There would be no fortification of our bodies with nourishment and no inspiration or insight to nourish our minds and spirits. I am here before you because of my story. Mine is an unlikely story. I remember standing at this moment, not ceremonially, not ceremonially, as I did not attend either of my graduations. I had no funds for graduation costs, and most of all, there was no family nearby to attend. I graduated as a single native mother with a major in creative writing poetry, both for my BA and MFA degrees. And now here I am standing with you, the class of 2021, dressed for graduation 45 and 47 years later. It's never too late. There is a reason there is never a table for poets for career day in high school. Poetry, I've learned, is a calling, is a need planted in an, enough of us because we need the artist, we need the poets for the continuance of the spirit of a people. We do not become poets because of great income potential or for recognition. There is a deeper truth made of words and sounds and meaning that we follow. I still do not understand this path, though I have learned to follow it dutifully. I came to poetry because of my immersion in human rights as a young native rights activist when I was an undergraduate. In those years of study and becoming, I heard real native poets for the first time as I worked with fellow students, staff and faculty who came together to assist in the need for human rights and justice. I have come to see that this path was planted in me generations back back to my great grandfather, Manahui, and the red sticks of the Muscogee Creek Nation stand against unjust removal from our homelands and even from before that time. I am driven by a need for justice and in poetry, I found a way to speak beyond words. There's a reason that poets are usually at the forefront or somewhere near of human rights or social justice movements. We are truth tellers. We have an obligation to speak what we see, what we hear, even if the truth is difficult to bear. That's the charge of being a poet. One of my first poems written during this time of becoming a poet, one of my first poems, yes, was written during this time of becoming a poet. It was a poem given to teach me. I say given, yet I don't mean to imply that we are just inspired and write things down and then the, suddenly there's a poem. Maybe that's true for a very few. The inspiration is only part of it. We work similarly to mathematicians and other scientists. We follow a question. There may never be an answer, and there is never just one answer. 
We pull out our tools of words, metaphor, music, history, time, philosophy, and need, get, and get to work to see what we will find in the architecture of lines, phrases, and sounds. Some poems require heavy revision. Others practically step out into the breathing world completed. This was a poem to teach me and to teach many others. It isn't the most technically outstanding. It doesn't show off syntactically, nor does it profoundly test the dictionary. It is exactly who it is, and it does exactly what it was meant to do. This poem, remember, has had a long life so far. It is being made into a book now, a movie, and it is going into outer galaxies on Lucy, a NASA spacecraft on the first reconnaissance of the Jupiter tri Trojans this October. And it still teaches us. It teaches me. Maybe it will assist you. This is the poem, remember. Remember the sky you were born under. Know each of the star's stories. Remember the moon, know who she is. Remember the sun's birth at dawn, that is the strongest point of time. Remember sundown and the giving away tonight. Remember your birth, how your mother struggled to give you form and breath. You are evidence of her mother's life and her mother's and hers. Remember your father, he is your life also. Remember the earth whose skin you are, red earth, black earth, yellow earth, white earth, brown earth, we are earth. Remember the plants, trees, animal life who all have their tribes, their families, their histories too. Talk with them, listen to them. They are alive poems. Remember the wind, remember her voice. She knows the origin of this universe. Remember you are all people and all people are you. Remember you are this universe and this universe is you. Remember all is in motion, is growing as you. Remember. During those times when I was starting out my life as a poet, I faced many personal challenges. I had many mentors who helped me through those moments that included despair, grief, financial hardships and violence. Some of the mentors were the musicians, singers, and songwriters I listened to as an aural map of inspiration in the imagination. John Coltrane lifted me up to the sky. The poetry and stories of the Laguna Pueblo poet Leslie Silco taught me that there were many roads to poetry, to becoming a writer, to the craft of making poetry and stories. One of the most influential poets of the 20th century, Charles Olson, an American poetry ancestor, a mentor I only, I only met in his books of poetry, served as a distinguished professor here at the State University of New York Buffalo from 1963 to 1965. I studied his projective verse in which Olson called for a poetic meter based on breath and open construction like a field based on sound rather than syntax and logic. Another mentor is someone who won't be in our books of Native history and accomplishment, though she holds such a place for many of us. She did not want her name out there and would not want me to say it here as much as I would love to say her name. Her work was about upholding Pueblo Indian values and life ways in a way that would fit with challenging times and changing times. and doing so, she was constantly challenged even by her own people. In times when I was battling, she understood. She counseled me, be yourself. That imperative sounded so simple and easy to a young fresh graduate, but it became one of the most profound teachings. An invaluable gift from a humble mentor. Only now I have come to understand how essential it is for all of us to be ourselves. And this is a little piece about her, this humble mentor. My favorite room exists now only in the imagination. 
That's how I visit it these days. I turn left into the yard of the small adobe house and park near the corn patch, which is by the clothesline. I knock on the kitchen door and she lets me in, as she has done more times than I know in many seasons of weather. It is always warm with sunlight. Dishes are drying on the side of the sink. Either she, her sister, or a niece gets me coffee. In later years, she had a cane. We talk family, village, and native community gossip. Sometimes we put on music and everyone danced. She distrusted computers, said they stole people, kept their attention from what mattered. We'd walk back through the small hallway, the neat living room decorated with Pendleton blankets and Indian rugs. There were baskets, potteries, and family photos. I remember visiting when her mother lived there and during feast days when the house filled with tables of food and the commotion of serving, talking, and laughter. We'd go to her special room, the place where the medicine box lived, her herbs, the various items given to her by those who she helped and her altar. She had a small shop in town where she worked. The numbers of street people who were predominantly native grew each year. She would feed them, find them clothing, and otherwise help any way she could. She never turned anyone down who asked for help. She always gave my daughter and son words of assistance in whatever they were studying or doing. My daughter stayed with her on weekends from Indian school when I lived out of town. Through the years, my children loved to visit her. Many came to her from all over the world for her teachings that were rooted in her spiritual knowledge. She had many <clears throat> invitations to travel and teach, but she did not want to put herself out in that way. Her spiritual energy was a healing light and people were drawn to it, to her stories. Her Pueblo roots were powerful anchors to the land. Her room was thick with song resonance. Through her eyes, I came to see that all is spiritual and we either move about respectfully within it or we are lost. One day we went back to her room and she pulled out her drum. We sang the song she was given when she had gone to the Sandia Mountains for cedar. Yahi, 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 yo. Yahi, 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 yo. Yahi, 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 yo. Her hands were the color of the drum. They appeared to be made from the same earth. She later gave me that drum. When I sing that song for the cedar and what it brings, it reminds me of the spiritual path that sometimes appears dim in the smoke of historical deception. One of my favorite memories in this life will be sitting outside near the corn patch on a bench with my daughter and her little boys, my grandsons, waiting for her to drive up. The boys squat in the sandy dirt running it through their hands. Our love for them plays about their shoulders. It catches the light of the love with which the corn was planted, with which the yard and house was tended, with which her life was lived. Let's thank the many mentors who inspired you. You would not be here without them. They have gifted you with resilience, reclamation, and relevance. Let's remember that whatever history we experience, whatever pandemic division within a country, within a people, within ourselves, that each of us that we know and remember that each of us is valuable and come bearing gifts to share. There is no hierarchy. Each of us is charged to leave this place giving back more than we came in here with. Acknowledge the familial ancestors who stand with you now, who have lined up behind you to urge you on. Let's give gratitude for this earth that spins through sky and time, gives us a home for our story making. Isn't that what we humans do? Make stories with all sorts of materials and paths, each so individual, yet with collective meaning. Now, Go on with your timeless imaginations and gifts and make your story. At Buffalo State, it has been a long-standing tradition to present our alumni awards at commencement in front of our faculty, staff, and graduates. 
While these awards will be formally presented at a later time, we wish to take a moment to recognize our alumni award recipients. Distinguished alumnus award Linda R. Appleby, class of 1980. Distinguished Alumnus Award, Michael J. Garner, Class of 1983. The Young Alumnus Achievement Award, Raven P. Baxter, Class of 2014 and 2017. Mm -hmm. Young Alumnus Achievement Award, Nathan E. Morose, Class of 2016. It has become a Buffalo State tradition to recognize those who have encouraged and assisted today's graduates. We now would like to take a moment to thank the family members, spouses, and special friends of our graduates for the support they have provided. We applaud you on this very important day. We also would like to thank the faculty and staff who encouraged and assisted our graduates throughout their journey. It is now my pleasure to introduce Provost James Mayrose to present the degree candidates approved by the faculty. Thank you, President Conway Turner. As Chief Academic Officer of Buffalo State College, it is my duty and my pleasure to present the degree candidates. The program booklet identifies 123 students graduating summa cum laude, 102 students graduating magna cum laude, and 138 students graduating cum laude including 31 who are graduating from the Muriel A. O. Howard Honors Program. Additionally, 224 students are cited for receiving individual honors from their academic departments and other college programs, including six receiving Educational Opportunity Program awards, two receiving Student Affairs awards, 23 scholar athletes, and nine students receiving Civic and Community Engagement Recognition Certificates. It is my pleasure to recognize all those graduating today with academic and leadership honors. We take a moment to recognize today's participants who have put themselves in harm's way in service to our country. Thank you to all those in the graduating class who are current or former members of the armed forces. We also acknowledge the family and friends joining us virtually today who are current and former members of the armed forces. On behalf of the entire Buffalo State College community, Thank you for your service and your sacrifice. I now call upon the Dean of the School of Education to present her degree candidates. I am Dr. Wendy Patterson, Dean of the School of Education. I would like to congratulate the undergraduate degree candidates from Career and Technical Education, Technology Education, Childhood and Early Childhood Education, and Exceptional Education. Madam President, on behalf of the School of Education, it gives me great pleasure to present these candidates and those in absentia who have completed the requirements of their respective curricula for the degrees of Bachelor of Science and Bachelor of Science in Education. Dr. Wall will now announce the graduates. Presenting graduates from the Department of Career and Technical Education. Mark Adams. Brian Barker, Amanda Breyer, Leah Koval, Madison Duchnik, Devin Ike, Eric Lippa, Lauren Nibalski. Connor Pignatora, Nicholas Warchaki, Delshan Ray. Presenting graduates from the Department of Elementary Education, Literacy, and Leadership. Rumana Akter, Shelby Marie Amos, Alexis Andre. Marjana Arfin, Lisbeth Aristega, Na J. Ashman, Elizabeth Baldwin, Q. 
Kiana Bellany, Brittany Blake, Ajani Bolden, Emily Bonner, Kevin Bovenizer, Alexia Bowden, Hannah Bowen, Denia Boyd, Madison Boyle, Lindsay Brozowski, Marielle Buckman, Kimberly Buellman, Olivia Bercy, Kevin Cabrera, Kyla Campanella, Megan Carlson, Christina Catalano, Leah Chimluski, Pamela Chulakian, Maria Shavala, Morgan Cicero, Jamie Kolka, Catherine Coppola, Natalie Corbine, Caitlin Kostich, Stephanie Cross, Nakaira Cueto, Melissa Danielwitz, Joyce Daniels, Samira Debu, Claire Diabold, Emily DeMaio, Julia Donato, Courtney Dobson, Sarah Doran, Anna Paola Duda, Anna Patricia Duda, Kaylee Dumas, Adele Egan, Yukaria Ezoyili, Hannah Faltisco, Samantha Farrington, Rachel Finucane, Naidashimi Florence, Maya Fox, Anchor Gabidon, Caitlin Gayek, Taylor Giantonio, Rachel Glicka, Felicia Glogalza, Kelly Glowney, Carly Glowney, Maya Gooding, Taylor Gould, Samantha Grabski, Breezy Greenert, Gabriella Gugliusa, Chelsea Hines, Samaya Hiphill, Kyra Herky, Shanae Hodge, Thada Tu, Rutha Tu, Jacob Jaroszewski, Anita Jones, Brandy Kazmarek, Sydney Keen, Monica Kinney, 
Rachel Keebler, Holly Krupski, Ashley Landall, Jessica Leach, Victoria Lewis, Alexis Lilly, Cameron Laura, Stephanie Marin Castro, Renee Martin, Aliyah McCullum, Leah McMullen, Gracie McNamara, Kaylee McPhail, Umaya Mebub, Danelle Miller, Kelsey Moan, Jamalia Morrison, Kayla Newman, Destiny Noel, Miranda Newer, Rowan Ottman, Dyla Pantlin, Antonasia Parker, Shelby Pasquale, Samantha Pelicano, Julia Pickering, Marie Ann Pirasaint, Michael Potgorny, Emma Pucalo, Casey Quinn, Ashena Rankine, Lauren Riley, Sarah Sayla, Angela Sorrow, Samantha Schultz, Jessica Schur, Tracy Shutt, Jennifer Sagan, Cassandra Shores, Lorraine Sierra, Brioni Seiler, Andrew Sison, Amanda Steiger, Madison Sterkula, Amber Terhart, Zane Thomas, Megan Trimper Aquindo, Mary Valley, Daniel Valvo, Grace Vogel, Alyssa Wary, Catherine Wilkins, Nanasia Williams, Lauren Wills, Michelle Woodward, Allison Wright, Shanika Wright, Alaya Wynn. Presenting graduates from the Department of Exceptional Education. Trisha Andres, Ashley Bone, Megan Busek, Rebecca Emmerling, Kelly Gant, Hannah Gleason, Jesse Govala Garretts, Mara Gribbins, Andrew Hepner, Autumn Jinx, Alex Kostek, Samantha Kurtzeal, Taylor Leiden, 
Yocasta Mencia, Madison O'Brien, Emily Orth, Kayla Peacock, Kyla Pecora, Lara Reese. Presenting graduates with degrees in individualized studies. Fatumo Abukar. Lisa Adain. Epaphras Adu. Myra Ahmed. Amer Al Hassan. Hillary Al Miller. Supo Ong. Josephine Avarello. Sarah Billingham. Deborah Bonnie. Justin Boucher. Christina Brooks. Laura Buckley. Anderson Burgess. Jade Calvin Naw. Nishika Cardoza. Sam Caridi. Chastity Carrion. Sealand Chaplin. Lovania Cheed. Julie Cheeman. Natalie Szynski. Stephanie Kolas. Deidria Coleman. Matthew Cortijo. Trevor D'Amico. Lene Daniels. Arva David. Cheyenne Dimps. Sangam Dungal. Jade Lynn Diaz. Nicole Diaz. Michael DiGiacomo. Victoria Everett. Chris Ashley Fogo. Michael Frazier. Nathalyn Freeman. Brianna Garonski. Serenity Gibbs. Mariah Gladden. Amira Graham. Essence Gray. Zeon Guzman Milton. David Hall. Kimone Hall. Jamie Hatcher. Alexander Hawkins. Daniqua Humphrey. Odessa Hunter. Jada Hutchinson. Janate Ingram. Lakaram Jairam. Catrice Jean. Rushan John. Eilis Johnson. Taylor Jones. Justuana Jordan. Lena Joseph. Divine Joseph Benjamin. Paterni Katako. Diasia Kibro. Mukesh Kadka. Nihad Quis. Brianna Kai Mensa. 
Francesca LaFletch, Paul Landwer, Samuel Maddox, Catherine Mana, Taylor March, Jessica McNair, Dariana Mitchell, Ashley Muhammad, Damian Mora, Kimberly Mossberg, Lauren Mundy Ashwood, Tara Nair, Maria Nickens, Rachel Nayarko, Quashan Olds, Jacoria Oliver, Vita Awusu, Athena Padmore, Caitlin Paracosi, Elijah Person, Giovanni Peter, Nicolette Peters, Michael Polina, Kevin Prum, Christina Puccia, Ashley Rackley, Naraline Ramirez, Elliot Repka, Richard Roberson, Jennifer Rodriguez, Marlon Santana, Megan Schaefer, Clarence Shepard, Nellie C. Olamide Soda, Daniel Somua, Karina Sekoiak, Corinne Stanislaus, Sean Starks, Spencer Stewart, Tosneshadi Stone, Iziel Tejada, Taiwana Thomas, Alyssa Tulino, Alexis Ubilis, Maria Wiworka, Adam Wilk, Katie Willis, Naima Wilson Simmons, Jared Wolardsik, Hamdi Jakob. We would now like to observe a moment of silence for Sanaya Dennis, a valued and beloved member of the Buffalo State community. Thank you. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the State University of New York, I thereby accept these candidates subject to the completion and certification of the academic requirements set by you. Degree candidates, I therefore confer upon you the baccalaureate degree for which you have been recommended. We are pleased to present you with a diploma and with it all the rights and privileges pertaining thereunto. If you are wearing a mortarboard, you may now move your tassel from the right to the left signifying that you are a Buffalo State College graduate. Graduates, never forget how proud you've made us all today. And now, families, friends, and distinguished guests, it is my final duty and my very great pleasure to present to you 
the Buffalo State College graduating class of 2021. Oh, <laughs>